to turn around. And we're in it. We're in it now. Oh man, I'm actually marking stuff under here though. No, 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 no. No, 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 Back up, back up. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Forgot my ultra light rod was back there. Oh my god. You okay? You okay? You okay, baby. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I oh, know, I know. I'm gonna do it again. It's a beautiful morning. Yo, what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nail Rory. Welcome back to my channel, Fishing Trips, and we're back for the vlog, y'all. Check it. Got a special episode for y'all today because I'm doing something that I've never done before on the channel. I'll give you a hint. See that? See that right there? Yep. That's right. Your boy's gonna be out here on this Hobie catching bridge monsters. Bridge monsters. So the goal is simple. I got three goals today. Goal number one, I want to catch sheephead. I'm, I'm going to be targeting sheephead, okay? Goal number two, catch a bridge monster. Whatever that might be. It could be a big ugly. It could be a, a bull red. It could be a jack. Number three is don't die, okay? I've never been in this area before. There's a lot of boats. This is a big area, big freeway, a lot of cars. I don't want to die, all right? Now, if I can put, like, you know, the priority, number three is going to be the number one goal today. It's not die. Number two, sheephead number three, bridge monster. I mean, personally, I think I can do it. <laughs> Enjoy the episode, y'all. Let go! One split shot on. I don't know, people. Let me see if I can get adjacent to this pillar. Do I see? Is there anything? Oh yeah, this current is kerning. Look, some underground poles. Gotta watch out for that. Hold on. See if I can break myself along the wall. Oh no. Alright. Gonna need my gloves. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Wait. I think if I can just come right here, the current will kind of keep me right along it. Wait. A little bit more, right there, right there. Okay, stop, stop. We good? We good? You? Yeah. All right. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Wait, wait! Avert! I gotta get a little bit more farther. Uh, gotta put on my gloves. A little bit more. Right there, right here, right there. We good? No, nope. pivot, pivot. <laughs> This current is. Well, if I fall in, I'm not swimming against this. There we go. How about right here? We good? I think we good. Alright. Whoa. 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 No, 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 no. Oh my god. This made the water. Okay. Okay. Alright. So. The current is pulling me. I think I'm good. All right. Can we just stay right here for a second? I'm in 10 foot of water. What I'll try to do is um, position myself. Oh man, 
This is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. I think I can work with this. I think I can work with this as long as no sharks come. All right, let's get the jetty rod, get some shrimp. Um, oh my God. Remember, go number three, don't die. I'm, I'm fearing for my life right now, so let's keep it moving. I think I'm directly over it. We're getting a little nibbles. Must be bait fish. <clears throat> okay, underneath my kayak. Oh, no, underneath the kayak. I think we got something though. Oh no. Look at that. Croaker. Yes. Now, quite honestly, to catch a river monster. <clears throat> nope. <clears throat> Perfect. Croker. I'm thinking like, should I keep this, use it for cut bait, and put this into my rod holder? But then I don't want to be soaking bait. I can't soak bait if I can't be stationary. No, no. Yeah, I can't soak bait when I can't stay in one spot. It's not gonna work. Keep trying. Right on the piling, perfect. Here we go, right on the piling. Work that current, baby. Got a piece of shrimp tail and body on it. There you go. Hit the current. Find me a river monster, baby. Keep calling river monster, bridge monster, damn it. Give me a bridge monster, baby. Come on, come on. Where you at, where you at? Find it. Find it. Come on. Just waiting. Maybe don't like the tail of the shrimp. There we go. There, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Better, a little bit better. Ooh. Get on the boat, get on the boat, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drum, little puppy drum. Yes, I don't think you classify as a bridge monster, baby, but all right, we got something. I'm happy. Relax, relax, relax. There we go, baby. Yes. Drum. It is not. It is not a bridge monster, but we'll take it. It's not a keeper either. Does it have to be like 14 inches? People say drum. They're around this size are really good. There we go. All right, y'all. So this is my first fish out of the marsh. I'm proud of it. It's not a keeper, but I know there's some monsters about 10 times the size of this one. And today I'm trying to catch it. You yeah. ah, mother effort. Make sure you hit the bottom. Oh, oh, turn around, turn around, turn around, baby. Oh, we got it. Oh, we got it. Oh, yeah, we got it. Was not expecting that. Nope, nope. nope. Oh, uh, nah, nah. come here. Another puppy drum. This might be a keeper drum, actually. No, no, no. Hey, brother, I might have to eat you. 
you might be good for a taco. Come here, come here, come here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. I don't think this is the keeper. There we go. I think the drum has to be like 14 or 15 inches. There you go. I just want to see what does a keeper look like. Yeah, this is like 13 inches. So a keeper, I think it's 14, but we're gonna see, we're gonna keep something like around 20 if we can. Adios, muchacho. All right, nice, y'all. Let's get another one. They're getting bigger, so we're making progress. Good thing is I can stake out right, oh, oh. I'm about to say the good thing is I can stake out right here. The bad thing is I ain't get no damn bites. Then I get a bite. Every time, start talking trash about the fish. I watch what the fish do. I watch what the damn fish do. It's coming towards the boat. Are you a keeper, whatever you are? Ooh, ooh. Uh, oh, look, at, look who we got. Look who we got joining the party. Look who we got joining the party. <laughs> oh, well, well. Look who, look, look who we got joining the party. <laughs> what a red fish. <laughs> wow. My guy, what are you doing? Bro, where's your bros at? Where's your bros at? Hina. This is crazy. Could you imagine like being up there and just Casting down, that'd be dope. Okay, they got almost all of it, bastards. Here we go. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Um, what does that mean? Horn, horns can't be good. Horns can't be good when you're on a small boat next to a huge bridge. I hear a noise. Is the train, is the train coming? Oh, it's a little, oh, it's going down. Like literally going down. Oh, that is dope. I think we have to get the witnesses. I mean, honestly, for a bridge to be that big, it's quiet as hell to be coming down like that. Ooh, am I getting bit too? Yep. Yep. Train coming and fish on. Train coming and fish on. Puppy drunk. Puppy drunk. Come here. Come here. Are you a keeper? No, no, no. I can't see. Crazy. Crazy turn of events. I don't think you're a keeper, homie. Thanks for coming out. Hold on. I don't know what's around this corner, so I'm a little worried. Y'all gotta excuse me. It's 12 feet right here. Uh, don't look like a keeper. What the hell? Bro, this is crazy. Right now, what are you getting yourself into right now? Oh yeah, black drum have to be 14 inches in um Texas. Bro, if a boat is not paying attention, decapitated. Alright, check this out y'all. The train is coming over the bridge. Let's see if we get the shot. This is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Let's go! Monster! 
Where are you at, Prince Monster? Come on and play! I need to find like structure. What about the damn current? Alright, y'all see the sheep head over there? Oh, it looks like the current's pretty strong over there too. Marking over here. Yeah, I'm definitely marking over here. Bro, what is that? Look like some big fish down here, y'all. So we might have to chill in this spot. Because the current is super strong right here. It might explain why I'm marking some big fish. Okay, we're about to run into the fan. No, 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 no. Get away from the pilot. Oh my god. Oh my god. Get away from the pilings. Oh no. Oh no. Reverse it. Reverse it. Get it. Get back. Get back. Okay. We got it. 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 Puppy drum almost killed me. Come here. Come here. Bro, you almost killed me. Yo, keeper, I'm gonna eat you. All right. Yeah, yo, you're a keeper, homie. You get Nate. Come on, put me in them damn pilings. There we go. Yeah, I believe that's gonna be a keeper. This will make some good fish tacos. I do wanna do a catch clean and cook. Verify the measurement. Nope, 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 nope. It is about 15 and a half inches. I believe this is a keeper. I'm gonna look up the regulation real quick. If it's a keeper. I don't know if I'm gonna catch anything else, but I know I'm gonna just have a fish taco. Yeah. All right, y'all, so I'm back at home, back in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed the first segment of the episode, the catch. Welcome to the second segment, the clean and cook. Yes, man, that is the first time in over two years of owning my Hobie, I took it out the marsh and hit the bay, okay? Let me tell you something, man, it was tough. I was fighting the current for six hours. I don't know if I do it again unless I have like a trolling mode or something to help me remain in one spot. It was a grind, man, it was a grind. Although I caught a lot of fish, I was only able to manage to keep one, but all it takes is one. All it takes is one to make a sandwich, right? But in this particular case, what I'm doing with that 15 and a half inch black drum is turn it into some fish tacos. Now, since I made fish tacos on my channel before to do a little something new, you know, for this episode, I'm also show you how I make my world famous homemade guacamole as well. And yeah, also I'm gonna try a fish sauce. I never do fish sauce, but I've seen one online and I'm gonna try it out. I mean, personally, I think I can do it. Check out the ingredients. All right, y'all, quick rundown. Everything you see before you is to make fish tacos, a fish sauce, and guacamole. So we got kosher salt. We got some cochata, relliolio, uno dos tres cheese. I got some H-E-B flour tortillas, the only ones I ever use. We got one sweet onion cilantro for avocados this is tricolor coleslaw i'm trying this i normally use like lettuce mixture but i'm gonna try this cabbage you know i don't know black people we don't really eat coleslaw but we'll try it out we got a gringo chicaraca seasoning we need mayonnaise this is gonna go for the fish sauce we got a kroger van sriracha sour cream butter of course garlic salt a couple of limes and a couple of tomatoes all this once again is to make my fish tacos, my fish sauce, and my homemade guacamole. 
quick and simple, man. We're gonna knock this out in like 25 minutes. You, all right, so interesting fact. It's been about three years since I last ate a black drum, okay? I'll tell you why it's been three years since I last ate my last black drum. Last time I caught a black drum, I think back in 2020, it's about 20 inches. 20 inches is a nice size black drum. Everybody know that these fish, you know, they turn into what we call the big ugly, okay? Eventually, they turn into the big ugly, okay? The big ugly has what? Worms, all right? So, we, you know, that's like, you know, 30 plus inches, you know, the big one, right? 20 inches is, you know, perfecto. Sure enough, I start to, you know, film my catch and cook, um, cut it open, and for the first time ever, I saw worms. Worms and my damn fish. So, yeah, I'm not one of those people who is like, you know, I'm not concerned about worms. It's not gonna hurt me. No, no, it is gonna hurt me. Emotionally, okay? So, no. I remember three years ago, the first time I seen worms and a 20 inch black drum. And ever since then, every time I call one, I let it go. But today, sacrificial lamb. He's the only one I can get. So let's hope this damn fish doesn't have worms. Now I know something else that you're thinking. Rennell, you just showed us about 27 ingredients. How the hell you got 37 items, right? How did you go to Crokin's and buy 56 different items for one 15 inch black drum? I tell you, I tell you. I ain't gonna lie to you. I did the walk of shame. I did the walk of shame, y'all. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. I have to buy some fish, okay? So unfortunately, unfortunately, this one black drum is not gonna feed me and my family, okay? That's why I have to buy. I'm sorry. I tried, damn it. It's six hours. So the black drum is just for the video, but the family has to eat, so I have to get some extra fish. The walk of shame. I know, I know, I, I know, y'all. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I bought fish. I bought fish. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. So let's get started with filleting this black drum. The good thing is, if it does have worms, I do have a backup, as you can see. So we'll go ahead and see how this goes. See how this goes. All right. So once again, y'all know I'm not the best flare, but I'm getting better as time goes. Go to angle. There. So yeah, y'all, that was the first time fishing in the bay. And um, right there, pot of head. I didn't bleed this fish and I'm already seeing a ton of blood. First, all right, so cuts 45 degree angle towards the head. Now we're gonna go along the top of the spine right there, okay? One second, y'all, y'all know, y'all know I like a clean board. Y'all know I like a clean board. All right, so. So yeah, man, I can't say that I'm going to go back out to the bridge. I was at the Galveston Causeway, if you want to know, because it was just way too hard trying to maneuver and stay in one spot. My goal was to definitely catch, you know, catch a sheephead. I thought it was going to be easy, quite honestly. I thought I was going to go straight to a pillar and chill up in one spot, sight cast sheephead, and get them. Yeah, it didn't work like that. The water was just moving and moving and never stopped. I cannot position myself. As you can see, I had some pretty close calls there, dealing with those pylons. Yep, some close calls for show. So yeah, I need like a spot lock, man. I need a troller motor. Honestly, you need a spot lock because you can get a troller motor, but if it can't put you in one position, it doesn't help you. Quite honestly. All right, so let me try to get better at my fillet job. I'll be trying to like make sure y'all can see everything, but at the same time, you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. Oh man. So the regulation for black drum in Texas is 14 inches. This was 15 and a half, I believe. Okay, so I'm looking for worms. Let's go above this rib cage. All right, I'm getting better at my fillet job, y'all. The last video is when I caught 27 inch red and I missed a lot of meat. I keep poking my finger. There you go. So I'm just going right along the top. Gotta just stay along the ribs right now. 
Go over that rib bone. It's crazy how big these fish can get, right? They're so cute when they're small, but when they grow up, they literally turn ugly. Hence, the big ugly. What's the thing is right now? All right, we, we, we're doing good. I'm not gonna lie. I still can't get a real good look at whether or not it has run yet. Okay, need to go over the ribs. See, with the fillet, you gotta really use the tip of the knife. That's the majority of the work. Right above. Oh, it's looking good, y'all. Black drum is actually really good. I don't know if y'all ever had it before, but 15 to 20 inches is a good drum. They actually taste good. All right, so let's inspect it. All right, so we're looking. Here we go. There you go. Yep. 15 and a half. Young and innocent. No worms. Yes. Let's freaking go, baby. All right, so next, just come down. I'm really impressed with my fillet job. I'm getting better, man. The more fish I catch, the better my fillet jobs get. I'm definitely um, getting better because I'm catching more fish, but I'm keeping them. You know what I'm saying? I used to just toss them back, but since my fish and trips family loves the catching cooks, I've been doing more catching cooks. And as I've been doing more catching cooks, I'm getting better at filleting fish. All right, got any pin bones? There we go, right there. Got to get the pin bones. We'll just trim that out. Perfect. There you go. Nice. So I didn't bleed it because I forgot my fillet knife in my damn tackle box from when I went surf fishing. But it still looks good. I can mess with that. All right. Yep, I did a good job. Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied with that, y'all. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, so let me just flay this other side real quick. You already seen how I did it. I don't know if I'm gonna show the rest, but regardless, we'll get this other flay off. And next, after I do my filet, what do I need to do next? Do I do my guacamole? Do I get my fish sauce? Do I need to start cooking? The fish is only take about three minutes. Well, let me finish this filet and I'll come back and we'll see what we're gonna do on the next scene. You yeah. All right, y'all, how to make homemade guacamole. Real simple, avocados, tomato, sweet onion, one lime, cilantro, black pepper, garlic salt, ingredients, that's it. Take your avocado, get you a nice sharp knife, be careful. Do one slit in the middle and rotate 360. So you come to the other side like this. And it should just come up just like that. From here, take your knife, be careful. You wanna just stab it, turn counterclockwise real slow. Take out your avocado stud, get a fork right here, pull it off. All right, which avocado, okay? Take it. Careful, slice it vertically. You're gonna do about four slices vertically. Like that, turn it and go the opposite way. Okay, next, get a spoon. Go along the edges and it's just gonna scoop out you just cubed it, remember? Watch that stud. And boom. That's it. We'll just repeat that process one more time. Once again, horizontal. Super careful. Get a spoon. Go along the edges of so the skin. Kind of go clockwise. You know, just kind of dice out, boom, just like that. So now we got our avocados. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we're done with the spoon. All right, so now that you have your avocados diced and sliced and everything nice, what you want to do next is 
your fork and press down. Kind of press along the edge and I rotate counterclockwise like this. Smashing down with my fork, it's going down. That's it. Now I saw at Kroger's, they have some kind of fancy avocado slicer and smasher. I think it was like $30, bruh. Everybody got a fork. Does the same damn thing. All right, turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. We're doing good, y'all. You wanna get all the big chunks out, because remember, we made squares. You know it's done when you don't see any more squares. All right. Avocado is a superfood, and you can just eat it just like this if you wanted to. Perfect. I assure you, the avocado that you see like in Kroger's H-E-B that's already in the container, it looks all generic and there's no texture, there's no flavor, there's no seasoning in it, you know what I'm saying? Make your own guacamole, people. All right, perfect. So to this point, that looks pretty good, okay? Yeah, it looks great, actually. All right. Next up, we can do the tomato. As far as how much tomato, depends on how much you like. I don't wanna go crazy on it, so I'm just gonna do like maybe two or three slices. Perfect. Push your tomatoes to the side. All right, so we got three tomatoes. Now with the three tomatoes, three tomatoes, we're just gonna do the same thing gonna dice it up long ways right turn it and dice it just like that I'll take out the center core part because nobody want to eat that just put it on my knife drop it in so you can adjust this recipe to however you like for example I know that a lot of people are watching this wondering where's the jalapeno at. I don't like jalapeno in my guacamole anymore. What happened was one time when I was, you know, learning how to make this years ago, I put, I don't know, like three jalapenos in my guacamole and I got super sick because it was super hot, idiot. <laughs> so ever since then, I can't do guaca jalapenos in my guacamole. Right, but I'm doing three tomatoes like so. Get the center core out, cause that's really hard and tough. It's all about texture, baby. Scoop it up, boom. All right. Moving right along. So, so far we got our guacamole, right? We got our tomato. Next up, sweet onion. Just turn it sideways. It's gonna get some slices. Just like the tomato, I might do like, Three slices of onion. Be careful right now. Uno mas, uno mas. There we go. Just to the side. We'll do three slices of onion. Take that first layer of skin off. Nobody needs that. How are we doing on time? Oh, one of my batteries about to die. Great. So got that. All right. Take our onion. We'll dice it up. Like so. That. Nice and nice onion. Sprinkle that in there. I don't go too crazy with the onion because you know it's such a powerful vegetable. So you gotta be kind of be careful. There we go. Just enough to you know, let, let the people know onions in the house. Probably do a couple more. There we go, turn it. I'm just dicing. I'm not one of those professional chefs where you can just kind of like, no, we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't cutting our fingers off today, baby. All right. Camera's blinking, it's about to die. It's all good, we're almost done though. All right, next, some fresh cilantro. Let's kind of get it and grate it like that, right? 
turn it back. Mm, I love cilantro. It smells so good. I know a lot of people don't like it. I think some people say for whatever reason to them it tastes like soap. So cilantro in there. Should you like maybe a half a stalk of cilantro. Like that. Let's move that to the side. All right, y'all, we're almost done. Gotta hurry up, because my camera is about to die. And I wanna finish this in one take. All right, lime. The lime is important because it helps preserve, not only does it give a great flavor, it preserves your avocado and your guacamole a little bit longer. There you go. So just do one lime, like that. There we go, perfect. Next up, seasoning. I love the garlic salt. Just season the flavor and just keep on taste testing it and you'll know when it's gonna be right. Ground black pepper. Then we'll just kind of slowly stir the mixture. Don't want to smash our tomatoes. So we just kind of slowly turn it. Just like that. Hurry up right now, the camera's gonna die. Make sure they can see it. And that's it, y'all. That is how you make some delicious, delicious, homemade guacamole. Enjoy. I know I will. All right, next we need to make our fish sauce. Never done this before, but it seems simple enough, so that's the only reason I'm trying it. All right, first we need half a cup of sour cream. So we'll do half a cup of sour cream. Get that little mixture there. Just kind of stir it up a little bit to get it loose a little bit. Sour cream, mayo, lime, garlic salt, and sriracha. I guess, whatever. All right, there we go. So here is our half cup sour cream. Like so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's put this to the side. All right, sour cream, check. Next, need one third cup of mayo. You know what I'm saying? One third. With that real mayo though, you know what I'm saying? Holler that craft, sponsor your boy. All right, so one third cup. Of, okay, we'll just spill it little right now. One third cup of mayo. There we go. Me. I gotta clean this up. I'm sorry, I got OCD. All right, perfect. All right, one third cup of mayo. There we go. All right, interesting. Yeah, that's really weird. All right, next, um, it says two tablespoons from a medium lime. So I think two tablespoons would be about a lime. So let's put that in my little juicer. There we go. Actually, I think one half lime is definitely two tablespoons because that's a lot of damn lime. All right. Next it says garlic powder. Not garlic powder, I got garlic salt. So we'll do about a tablespoon of garlic salt. And it says shirazza. Sriracha, sriracha for taste, just a little bit. So it's like a teaspoon, so we put a little squirt there. That's it, that's it, baby, that's it. That's all you need. All right, so once again, y'all, super simple, right? We did half a cup sour cream, one, one third cup of mayo, okay? Did about a tablespoon of garlic salt and a teaspoon of sriracha. We'll take our ingredients. Oh yeah, also two tablespoons of lime. So it says just kind of stir it up. There we go. Okay, that looks interesting. It's a sauce right now, it's supposed to look like this. Gotta be saucy. All right, so we just kind of mix it up, kind of whisk it. I guess it's like a lime. Okay, there we go. 
There we go. All right, all right. We're making some food now. All right. Let's give it a taste test. Mmm. Mmm, okay. Mmm, okay. Let's do a little bit more garlic. Let's tad more garlic. There we go. Yeah, that's good, y'all. More garlic. Taste again. I mess with this. I mess with this. All right, there you go, y'all. Fish sauce. It's really good. I hope it's gonna get good on the tacos as well. All right, next up. What the hell I gotta do now? Damn, this is a lot of work. Oh yeah, I gotta cook my damn fish. All right, so let me cook my fish. Y'all know how to cook fish, right? I don't, I don't gotta show y'all that, do I? You know, just butter put it in the pan for like three minutes, flip it, season it, three more minutes, done. All right, this video is already long enough. So yeah, let me cook my fish. Um, yeah, we'll jump to the money shot. Y'all want to see me cook the fish? Oh man. All right, either I'm gonna jump to the money shot or I'm gonna show y'all cooking my fish. Just for like one scene. I'm so damn bougie. Damn. All right y'all, so I got two pans, one for my tortillas, one for my fish. Here's my seasoned fish there this is the you know that's what i caught that's that store-bought stuff whatever don't judge me so what we're gonna do is just get some butter nice generous amount we're gonna blacken it the stove is medium there we go yeah it's definitely hot i'm gonna turn down a little bit this should cook in like three minutes. There we go. I'm ready to get this over with, so we're gonna cook it all at the same time. All right. Next is my HEB tortillas. If you ain't never had these, you're missing out. I will never get another type of tortilla besides the fresh ones made at HEB, period. So, Gonna get our tortillas. Set my timer. It's been about a minute. Timers are important, man. You be doing so much when you're cooking, it's really easy to forget what the heck you're doing. All right, so I got my other pan just below medium. Just take it around like that. Put it down and just start counterclockwise, just like that. You. Yeah. All right, one second, y'all need to get another plate, some more tortillas. All right. Wash your tortillas. About 60 seconds on each side. You wanna get that nice little golden brown, as y'all can see there. Y'all see it? Yeah, yeah, ouch. Make sure you get that butter all picked up. That's it. Repeat the process. Drop your butter all the way around, coat it nice. If you have your stove or oven too hot, stove, I'm sorry, you'll burn your butter to kind of be cognizant of that. Wash our fish. Remember, we're only gonna do three minutes on each side. This old farm raised tilapia, it might need to cook longer, unlike my freshness over here. Flip it. more seconds and this is the process y'all we're going to do this other side for three minutes i'm gonna finish cooking all my tortillas that i need for the fam and yeah that's the process of making tortillas and cooking fish so i will see y'all on the next scene aka the money shot as soon as i get this damn butter out the damn pan ouch oh hell with it y'all we got too much going on. I'll see you on the money shot.
right, y'all, time for my favorite part of the episode, the taste test. Excuse the background, it's World War II. Oh my God, just don't, don't look at, don't look at any of that. All right, y'all, so this is what six hours, six hours looks like. All right, first things first, let's try the homemade guacamole. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mmm. I'm sorry, y'all. Once you have homemade guacamole, you would never buy that pre-made guacamole at the grocery store, period. Mm, it is so good. It's so easy to make, right? Okay, let's try this taco. The star of the show. Ooh, hold on, give me a minute. There you go, look at that. Look at that, put a little lime on it. Ooh, ooh, that's food porn right there, y'all. All right, here we go. Here we go. Six hours, motion sickness. Puppy drum. Mmm, my God. Mm. Yes, for what? Mmm. The coleslaw is good. The black drum is good. Onions, tomato, cilantro. But that fish sauce? Okay. Once again, I'm about to throw down. So, um, let me hurry up. Get this over. I'm ready to eat. Open up my mouth. All right. If you like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below. What's your favorite way to eat fish? Fried fish, baked fish, barbecue fish. Let me know. I'm just curious. Also, make sure you subscribe to my fishing adventures. Cause boy, you know I get into a lot of things, y'all. Thanks for hanging in, man. I know it's another long one, but you know, I make, I make long videos. I make movies, damn it. I don't make no YouTube videos. I make movies, short documentaries. And thank you for tuning in, y'all. Once again, my name is Raynan Roy. It's been real, y'all. Peace.